All right, welcome to the On My Block podcast, Green Bay Packers podcast. I'm your host, Mike Wall. Our good friend and co-host, Mon Green, is out today. So I will be taking you through. This is going to be coffee and, and, and film. That's what we're going to watch today, guys. So check this page out on YouTube. I'll be sending clips out on Twitter. Um, of course, you can hear the auto, but if you want to get the full effect, I think this week there'll be a lot of stuff going on. I have some film to break down. I want everybody to kind of understand at least the way I see it, and uh, hopefully that'll be helpful for everybody out there. But first, bet online. Football is back. Basketball is back. And bet online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup information, player news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wager and info, bet online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events like Major League Baseball, MMA, tennis, boxing, even golf. So head to betonline.ag today and join to receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. So let's get right into it. Packers 21, Commanders 23. Three-game losing streak. Really disappointing loss. Packers fall to 3-4 and four for the first time under Aaron Rodgers. Um, here's some stats that are just kind of mind-boggling. You think about, think about all the... Work that has been done by the part of the commissioner and his competition committee in order to make the offenses more advantageous. And you have the best quarterback, arguably the best quarterback on the planet. We are averaging 18.3 points per game. We went 0 for 6 on third downs. I think that's the first time since I was playing in 1999 that we went 0 for on third downs in a game. We're averaging. So here's a stat that is. And this was all over the field yesterday. Rodgers is averaging 3.2 air yards on his completion Sunday afternoon. He averages the second lowest in the league at 4.3 yards. So that means the amount of distance the ball actually travels in the air because all the bubble screens, all the quick passes, all the all the uh, you know the swing routes from the court, the, the fullbacks, or the, excuse me, the halfbacks. And as we get into this tape, you'll see a lot of it is because. It's schemed up that way. A lot of it is because guys aren't creating separation. A lot of it is because you're, you know, the quarterback might be seeing the rush for the first time since he was, you know, second, third year in the league. You know, you think about back in the day when Aaron was younger, you know, one of the things that one of the maybe the knocks on him from an offensive lineman standpoint is he held the ball for a long time. He's getting rid of the ball at a record pace, but it's not advantageous to us as an offense. So everyone thinks, oh, well, if you get rid of the ball fast, you're not gonna have all these problems. But if you're throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage or within 3.2 yards from the line of scrimmage every time, and you don't, you only have one guy, really, you think about it. Aaron Jones is your one yak guy on this team right now. Think about it. Romeo Davis isn't a yak guy. Tunyon's not a yak guy. Mercedes Lewis, I love Mercedes Lewis. I wish he'd catch, I wish they'd throw Mercedes, Mercedes Lewis should play every snap and he should catch as many balls as he wants. They should have a minimum 10 ball minimum from Mercedes Lewis, but he's not a yak guy either. You know, Randall Cops hurt. Sammy Watkins doesn't stretch his legs on 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 a, on a fly route, and so it doesn't like all this math doesn't add up. So very very, I think frustrating for the. I can't imagine how frustrating it is in the locker room. I remember very specifically there was a time when we started. I believe it was one and four, <clears throat> and the feeling in the locker room. To be honest, at that point, and this is that's a lower point than this is in my my opinion, and we have. Like we have number one offense guys. Like we have this is Donald Drivers there, Bubba Franks, you know, Brett's our quarterback, Amon Green's our fullback, Will Henderson. We have got like we have guys. And we're not performing. And it was, you know, I think Mike at that point, Mike Sherman might have taken the 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 play calling over from Tom Rosley, something that maybe Matt LaFour needs to think about. Not that there's even a guy that can call plays aside from Matt, but maybe he needs to focus on the entirety of the team because that's something that does get in the way. As a head coach, sometimes you have to, you know, the way that you delegate your responsibilities and the way that you decide to um, utilize your time in the building, if you're the one calling the plays, then who's taking care of the entire team? You know, who's, you know, who's kind of, who's the rooster in the hen house, so to speak. But Mike used to take the plays over calls over from time if we weren't performing well. And that happened, I think, twice in my, in my seven years there. But I remember thinking very specifically and we all felt this way, that we just weren't executing and it was going to happen. I don't know if they feel that way right now. Like, in other words, we thought, hey, we already know we have the talent. Like, every, you know, every, we had, I think, 10 guys on that team were, were, were Pro Bowl players and on that offense. 
And we knew that it was going to come. It just wasn't happening like we wanted to at that moment. I don't know if they feel that way now. And there's some comments coming out of Aaron uh, last night after the game, talking about the Buffalo Bills game. This is the best thing that could happen for us. People have asked me that question. We're going to tackle some fan mail- mailbag stuff later, but I'll just say this. I don't think it's a great situation to go up to Buffalo right now, the way they're playing. Um, and, and as inept as our offense is, and knowing that Von Miller is going to be out there playing against, whether it's Zach Tom, I mean, whoever, or, or not Zach's, well, it could be Zach Tom, but also it could be uh, Josh Nyman on the other side. And this Jordan Phillips is play, everybody on their team's playing well. It's going to be a really, really difficult game up there. But but let's talk about this game. Let's start with the offense because I'm offensive and I'm offended, but I'm offensive. 54 total plays. And my take is this. We are beginning to talk and kind of act things into existence on offense. So you say that you have uh, – you say that you have a, a, a blocking problem. You shuffle our offensive line. You say that you have some rapport problem maybe with the receivers or they don't – they're not PhD-level guys on par with Aaron yet or they're not, they're not seeing the same stuff at end. They're clearly not. But you start saying all this stuff and then what happens? All right, well, we have to rely on – these bubble screens. We have to rely on the quick game. We have to get the ball out of our hands. And or we can't separate. Well, all of these things, like everything plays into one another. You start talking it enough, and all of a sudden you look at you look down, and yeah, your quarterback's getting rid of the ball, but there's nobody with you know, there's nobody on, on the field except for maybe Aaron Jones that really has yak possibilities after you know after he gets that ball in his hands. We started off, and I think a lot of people are trying to figure out why 70% of our pass, you know, of our plays are pass plays in the last three, four games, especially when you got have a guy arguably your best offensive player right now is Aaron Jones. We talked about it at length last week. Hey, if you want to you really want to challenge this commander's team on defense, offensively, you want to use you want to do some outside zone with Mercedes Lewis away from Montez Sweat. You want to do some crack blocking away from Montez Sweat. You want to get double teams inside. You can run gap, which we didn't run, but we could have. Uh, in in the you want to go under center, run passing or play action pass with with uh, with some pulling guards. So basically, deep play action passes. We had a couple that worked. We had a couple that didn't. We had a couple that were open, but the rush got in the way. Um, you wanted to run switch routes on your releases. We did not do it. They did that for a touchdown that we'll show, but we did not do that. Crossing routes, our guys did not get separation. A couple times they did, but against man coverage, we, we we'll see it on the on the film. Sometimes we didn't get separation. And then we took some shots with guys that are capable of taking shots. And we just, whether it was miscommunication or we flat out ran the wrong route, there's some things going on that just don't look right. You know, like somebody said it this morning on, on the radio. And I think it's the best thing. The best way I heard it was that we look kind of like a preseason offense right now. And, it's, and it was week seven uh, going into that game on Sunday. So the first series starts off with promise. They ran a couple toss cracks away from sweat. Um, the first play and the third play the, uh, for, for positive yards, like four yards and maybe seven or eight yards on the, on the second one. We ran the outside zone with Mercedes Lewis double team. And then we ran uh, it. We actually had a good play set up. Aaron Jones decided to cut inside because Yash came off on the linebacker early um, or not early as he shot. And it, maybe the hole was up and outside, but you misread those. That happens. The ninth play with the outside zone again with a lead blocker now in Deguara. And that goes for a little. We end up getting a, you know, a first drive is you get the touchdown or, you know, in the, in the first couple of series of the game, you feel good about yourself. You're moving the football. You're utilizing Aaron Jones. Yes. There's some short passing game, but we're, you know, there's it, you're on schedule. And the biggest thing with this offense is, can we be on schedule? Can we, can we have to build confidence, right? You have to start from somewhere. Can we build confidence? This is what we thought we would see. Then you get in right after that. It was like the ninth play of the drive, ninth play of the game. And the first play out, we have, and I'll show it on tape. We have, uh, we have a miscommunication on a deep pass, and then we have a holding call that was completely unnecessary. And I think we had a couple holding calls. I think Josh had two holding calls in the next two series. Um, and sometimes those things alone are just too much for this offense, knowing that we can't pick up chunk yardage. It might be too much for us to overcome. Uh, we did try some shot plays, but you know we did try some under center play action pass. We did try. Uh, we did try the. Uh, play action pass from shotgun with with two backs. Uh, we did it twice. Once one time it worked for a deep slant. One time it did not. The times it's not working. The unfortunate part is, like, like you know, I think a lot of guys that have been out there and, and have heard. Once you cross the fifty, look for what? Look for the shot play. That's what they want to do. 
first down across the 50. We run two shot plays. They're sitting back in cover two, cover four, deep safeties. Nothing's open. You got to hit a check down. You know, it's it's almost like you're scripting. Again, it's kind of like it doesn't feel like there's a smoothness and a, a, a familiarity with the play construction design over the course of the game that you would see from a team that has had success with a team that's, you know, in week seven with the four time, uh, you know, four time MVP. The wide receivers, this game, you know, we, we start this, we always start this talking about the skill positions, the wide receivers for this game. There's plays to be had. I, and we'll, we'll show, show a couple of them on tape. And my Rogers dropped one. Um, I know he had a bad day in, in special teams, but he dropped one. Dobbs mis, misran some routes. Um, our guys got covered up by a team that has been giving up a ton of big plays on switch releases, crossing routes, play action pass. Like we just did not get open. There's, there's times when you turn this tape on and the, the offensive line did a pretty fair job for the most part of keeping Aaron clean. And he's looking around trying to find somebody. He's throwing these checkdowns. Aaron Rodgers throwing checkdowns because he, because he feels like he has to, not because he wants to. Um, this isn't like Kobe, you know, remember when Kobe Bryant used to, go out there every once in a while and show the Lakers like, Oh, you want me to shoot? We'll see how the team does. And he, he wouldn't shoot for the first half and they'd be down by 20. And then, you know, they'd have to go in and say, okay, can you shoot now, please? This, that, that is not what's going on right now. He wants to air it out. He wants to make plays. There's just not a lot of plays to be made. So let's get into a little bit. of. Well, let's get into, let, let's start by saying this. If we look at tra our trench warfare series, let's go right into the tape as we do this. You know, I want to give a shout out to Zach Tom. Zach Tom comes in and plays left tackle. Bakhtiari uh, has an unfortunate something going on with that knee. And the kid came out. I mean, he hasn't played all season. Rookie, Wake Forest. You know, he has a heart, he has a really high uh, RAS relative athletic score. I was a big fan of his in the preseason, big fan of his in the draft. The guy, the kid played pretty well. Pretty solid for a first start against, you know, a really good defensive line. I think generally speaking, it made a lot of sense to put John Runyon Jr. and um, EJ in in at guard, obviously leaving Myers at center. Now, whether or not you flip-flop those guys or whatever, I don't know. But I do know that those two guys up till now, um, if you just kind of project what Elton Jenkins is going to be at guard, um, they're going to be your two best players with Bakhtiari not in there. And so you want them against their two best in uh, Deron Payne and obviously Jonathan Allen, who are, you know, arguably the two best, you know, the uh, the best defensive tackle tandem in the National Football League. They're very, very good. And there's just, uh, from a from an offensive line standpoint, yeah, they protected pretty well. There were some, some guys that got through, but they protected pretty well. There's just not a lot of success. Um Lost a couple early 1v1 penetrations, we'll see. We didn't run that gap play. There was there was success on the outside toss crack. We just we had too many negative plays to start series, whether it was a, whether it was a, a run, whether it was a, a penalty, and you're just we're not in a situation right now where we just pick up big chunks of yardage. So the outside zone play, uh it it was available. It was available for four, five, six, seven yards of carry um consistently. We didn't run it. Uh, we kind of got away. It's just like everything. We got away from everything. Let me look at the stats real quick because I want to say Aaron Jones, uh, if I look at the rushing yards. Yeah, so Aaron Jones had eight carries yesterday and, and AJ had four. So we had 12 carries rushing. So I know we had 54 plays total, but we had 12 carries rushing. And you're not going to win. In this game, you're not – with our receiving core, as it is right now, and our offensive line and everything else, and, and the way that, uh, quite frankly, Aaron's seen – the, you know, seeing the rush and not having a lot of, let's just say, connection with some of these receivers, you're not going to win any football games throwing the ball or running the ball 12 times a game when your best player is, you know, right now is Aaron Jones. I just, you know, I, I don't feel like they're having any conviction in what they're what they're trying to do. Um, let's look at the offense here. So first play, we talked about under center. Play action pass. We got to keep pass. So this is huge, right? And we roll out. And Romeo Dobbs runs to the opposite side. Now, I don't care. Aaron Rodgers, on nowhere on the planet, 
is going to roll out to the right on the run and throw the ball to the far pylon. Plus, the backside corner is the only guy who's going to have a chance on this thing. The space is all right here. And I could be way off here, but I think Dobbs is going the wrong direction. Okay, this is the first play after the touchdown. So, we, we, you know, we had built some momentum. And then you look at this. Again, this is the easiest. This is a free play for an offensive lineman. Offensive lineman, when you get in this situation, you know what? I, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to take a free shot on one of these fools across from me. And Yash decides to hold the guy. And there's, and what he has to understand is, not only did you just caught, this could have been a touchdown. You cost your team 10 yards. And there's no situation where Aaron Rodgers doesn't get rid of that ball before. I think that was, I think that was Deron Payne makes the play. Like there's no potential reason to hold that guy. It's just, those are silly penalties. This is a bad play. And it, it just said, unfortunately, it kind of starts setting the tone for the rest of the game because now it's first and 20 and you just missed a touchdown. Go back. And we look at, so Elgin's getting back used to it. And what we're doing against guys, now the Jonathan Allen's best thing is he's slippery as hell. He takes a great first step and he's very, he swims guys all the time. You see it all over tape, right? So you got to get your second step in the ground. And if you're an offense that's running the kind of outside stretch, zone, maybe it's easier in this situation to do it from a, from a pistol look or something where he doesn't have to run across the ball because you know you might have penetrators because you don't have a very good right now outside zone running offensive line. When they have to single block, he swims and we have this play. And then you end up getting a loss. So now, again, you're going from a potentially, you know, great start to a series to backed up. And I'm just trying to point all this stuff out so people can see it. So we've got a three by two empty set. And we're just trying to get. Five, six yards here. Stop. Okay. Down here, they've they've got shell coverage. We're going to clear. We're going to take an out. And we're basically reading one to two. Now, because 55, their linebacker is so far off, he can just turn and sit. When this man sits right here, tunyon has got to sit down. And Aaron's not going to throw the ball into danger right here. He's going to throw it right, right where he threw it. You just have to sit down. So those are like these easy plays where you got, if you want to find production, this is where you find them. Like on the little five yard on the drop passes because you're in the wrong position. It's just little details here and there. Another situation. We got two deep. We're under center. And if you look, we have our crossing route. It's right here. He's turned out. He doesn't have him. We got somebody crossing the face of this linebacker. He's not there. But Aaron sees pressure in his face, so he has to hit the check down. We'll show this from the end zone copy. Right here. This is wide open if he can step up. But we're getting beat. Left guard's getting beat inside. Again, with the same swim move we just saw in the run game, right? The guy's like, scattered report. Guy's really good at it. That's what he does. Sw inside swim. Beats everybody on it. But now Aaron's got to turn away and not step into that throw because there's somebody at his foot. Now, that's just, feet, that's just what happens. And these plays happen all the time across the NFL. It's just It seems to be happening a lot more with a guy that doesn't happen too very often in Aaron Rodgers. They decide this is an overthrow. And the only thing I'm showing here, and I listen, what do I know, right? I'm an offensive lineman. But I can't say with any certainty. That he's running as hard as he can. When they showed it on TV, you know, five, six times, you just start wondering, is he running as hard as he can? Okay. This looks great, and this is what we thought they would do. You get a deep play action. 
meaning you've got multiple guys switching, you know, switching sides. You've got the offensive line coming off the ball, and now you're just going to take this, you know, because what does that turn into? A two man route, okay? Maybe a three man route, but you basically have your one on one over here. You're going to suck these linebackers in, and you're going to take your, you're going to take your slant, bang. Those are the play. I mean, that's what I thought we'd saw all we would see all day is putting those guys in situations where the pass rush isn't going to be as um, as dangerous because they're going to read run first, and then it's going to be a, off of timing, so he doesn't have to hold the ball for too long. But it's not that like we're just going to throw the bubble screen. Now look at the action here and what this does. Linebackers suck up. Everybody's going sideways. Hardest block is really DeGuara here. Does a nice job. And because those guys suck up, now here's a great lane. And this is football. This is football one-on-one. Use, use, your, use your eyes. Use your motion. Use, use the coming off the ball. Use the play action to create these lanes. And then you got one of the best guys in the world doing it. Throw to the open man. Great play. Unfortunately, not as many as we'd want to see. So we had talked about, listen, you can do a lot of stuff. Just don't run towards this guy. Because I, my, in my opinion, this defensive line is better than our offensive line right now. I don't think anybody would argue that. And this guy in particular, I know these, Jonathan Allen might be the second best defensive tackle in the league. This guy's a problem in the run game. He just is. And Mercedes Lewis is a stud and all of this. But he just stands up. He's in the backfield. This is what Preston Smith does for us all the time. But it creates a real problem because you got nowhere to go on an outside zone play. So this is one of those kind of – I would just call this from a scheme standpoint and understanding the matchup. That's a really tough look. So you got a bunch look up top. Now this is the fourth down play. Just watch what happens here. I think I have this in slow-mo. Now, this is just because they don't have a rapport. This guy, I'm going to pause it. Aaron's, this ball is not released yet. This guy's already breaking. Sammy Watkins is gone. This guy's already breaking on Dobbs. They are not covering Sammy Watkins. And Sammy Watkins isn't blocking either. So you tell me. That's unfortunate. Like, those are the kind of plays that, you know, I think last year you just go, that would probably work. Let's go back here and just talk defense real quick. Some coffee. Devondre Campbell has an exquisite pick six. Could have had two. We'll show the play later in the game with an unbelievable effort from Rashawn Gary. Surprised that we didn't have any sacks in this game, but I think that shows you that Heineke just played really well. You know, the takeaway for me in this game, we talked about it before, you know, you're going to get more out of the Washington Commanders team with Taylor Heineke than you are Carson Wentz, because I'm just telling you from a guy up front, you know, when you, when you're an offensive line that's given up 23 sacks and your quarterback has a history of taking sacks, you don't particularly want that guy, unless the guy is just unbelievable. I mean, throwing for 400 yards and five touchdowns a game, you don't particularly want him in the game. Like he's got to be adding a ton of value to be given, getting hit that much because there's nobody in the NFL that is bad enough up front where you should be giving up over three sacks a game. It's just, it's just not a thing. And so Heineke doesn't get sacked a single time. He does throw the pick six, but he's not getting sacked because he scrambles around. It's not like we didn't create pressure. I think they, you know, generally again, this is a game up front where we'll watch this on tape and you'll say, we play, we did some things really well, but overall, we are having some, some mental, some focus, effort, mistakes that I don't think are based on talent. And we'll see them right. Let, let's go, let's just go right into the tape to make it easy. So I want to say first off, loved. Absolutely loved that they did this. So they put Quay out here because so they can bring stand up Sean. And now we got all our guys right here and he can run on this center. So arguably the worst pass blocker on the team. 
and you can go any direction you want. You got a three-way go. You can run pick stunts. You can go 1v1. You can walk up to Vaudry and make him think about both guys. I mean, there's just so much you can do here. And because you put Quay out here, the right tackle can't slide all this all the way over. And if they keep the tight end, then we can green dog. So there's just a lot of options here. I love the way they ran this. I think it ended up being an incompletion. But you can see that they're going to get pressure there. And that's just something like you can like to continue to see more of that. There's a lot of teams right now, including the commanders, including the Jets, that are running three-man to a side lines. Again, this is another play that I just really loved because, I mean, look, it's early in the game. Alexander comes up, great stick, but look at the pursuit. Look at all these guys pursuing to the ball. Really, I mean, just really getting into it. Kenny Clark's diving over the pile, really getting into it. That's what you want to see from your team. That's what you want to see from your defense. Love the physicality. Okay, this is a detail. So let me back it up a little bit. So I love that they're bringing – you got to utilize Clay, uh, Quay Walker because he's – when you watch him run, especially like on the Devondre Campbell uh, interception, you realize like this guy really is a unique athlete, okay? for I mean, I know everybody else probably knows that, but this guy's a really unique athlete. You have to utilize him because he's – because when you're a young player – you are you're really relying on kind of your your football instincts and your athletic traits and you're learning the game. So he's learning the game right now, but he's getting all these reps, but it's like how do you maximize his effectiveness? Well, it's not necessarily playing man coverage or like taking guys taking on blocks, although he's getting better at everything. It's let's start putting him in situations where his athleticism is going to outperform like this one. Now, you watch this stunt, so they bring Rashawn Gary down and they bring Quay here, but you see Quay's his angle is so wide, like he's out of the picture right here. When Rashawn comes like this, there's nobody to block him. You can just come straight downhill, and you probably have a sack here. There probably isn't a pressure. It's probably a sack. So little detail, but something that I love that they're using now, getting him more involved and put him in a free rushes, put him in situations where he can just use his athleticism and instincts to play ball, and now we're just learning on the move, but the confidence that you gain from being able to do that is monster. Okay. Now, this is this is the first of a big, you know, this is the first big run, and you see all the times they scored this week or got down in, in, in the, under the 10-yard line, it was because of a big play, like a big running play in particular. And so this is the first long run. And you look at this, we're out leveraged here. So basically, as we go in motion, we go in motion here. Stokes, if Rasul Douglas is going to play inside the tight end, then we've got to fill here, okay? And if we don't fill, they're going to capture the edge. Now, in this situation, we're in what I'll just call, we're in big nickel in that we've got, We've got our five down linemen or our three down linemen or two outside linebackers, and we've got Devondre in, but Quay's out. So Rasul Douglas is really the guy who's going to play the other linebacker position. As you see, the motion goes over here. This is really jacked up for us. Devondre Campbell is going to follow him out. We've got two safeties or safety in a, in a nickel corner playing run defense in the box now. This is a good scheme by the Washington Commanders, but you'll notice here, you can just see just outside, you can see his foot. There's Eric Stokes. He still doesn't understand who has the ball. Like, eye discipline's important, okay? The ball was handed off. He's still looking inside. He just now realizes the ball's outside. That's a problem, right? So eye discipline matters. It's just a matter, you know, we got to get up, be physical on this tight end, walk up, create the, create the confrontation, but you have to identify this first. You got to see through the play, see the quarterback. The quarterback hands the ball off. You can't sit there and wait another second, second and a half to make your move. Otherwise, we get big plays here in the run game. Nice tackle by Adrian Amos to save what could be a much been a much bigger play. Now, I'm going to show this from the end zone copy because this is another big run. And this again set up a score. 
And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and this is just a technique that they started doing. Last year, they weren't doing this as box technique. So Rashawn Gary, instead of keeping your outside arm free so you can turn, now imagine as a as a uh, as an athlete, or imagine it's, it just if you stood up right now and I and I said stand square to the line of scrimmage, and I pushed on your right shoulder and I told you to start sprinting left. It'd be very easy because it's like a ninety degree turn. You just turn and run. But the problem is when you play this box technique that Rashawn Gary's playing right now, and coaches teach this. So he's now played this box technique. He's not really delivering a blow here, right? He's kind of absorbing and trying to read this out. If we get bounced, and he does have outside contain here. I mean, this is the way that they – this is box technique means you have outside contain. If they bounce, you can't turn around because you got to do 180 degrees and try to catch this guy. And it's just never going to happen. Like, Rashawn Gary is a great athlete. He plays so, so hard. But this technique is never going to win against a bounce running back. It's just not going to win. It gets beat all the time. It's unfortunate, but you know, for I understand the reason that coaches like it. But a same foot, same shoulder strike on the end of the line of scrimmage will take will get rid of these problems. Got to get this guy down. The guy was a hard runner, Robinson. Okay, so we talked about the Packers wanting to run switch releases. So a switch release means these guys down here are in a, a like a twin formation. And they're going to overlap. And what that does is it creates a communication issue with our defensive backs. Now, this is what the Washington commanders really struggled with on defense. Apparently, we do too. So they run the switch and they go back in. Okay, so they stacked. They go back in and both these guys follow the outside receiver. And all they did, it's like, this is so, this is football one-on-one, right? It's not easy, but it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. All they did was went from here to a stack position. And now both these guys aren't sure if they should read one or two. And really, you could probably guess that Stokes has the inside guy because Amos already has outside, outside uh, leverage. So there's the touchdown. Now, this was the – somebody asked me in the mailbag, are the Packers giving up? And these guys are – I just these guys are professional athletes, okay? Nobody's giving up. People are upset. People are frustrated. These guys play hard. This guy plays hard all the time. Sean Gary, okay? I would – you know, he had some opportunities to make some more plays. Preston Smith played an incredible game yesterday as far as playing on their side of the line of scrimmage. I thought he had an excellent game, a couple of pressures. Sean Gary here flushes, runs around, sack fumble. This is to the house. And as we all know, they called what is now a very clinical call in the National Football League, illegal contact downfield. I think it was on Stokes. And whether we like the call or not, that's what happens. And it's unfortunate, but that is the reality of the game now. That is where this game is going because they want to create more offensive plays very simply because it's more fantasy football money, it's more betting money, it's more eyeballs, et cetera, et cetera. People like offense. So let's get into this mail bog. Let's not do that. Let's try that again and get into – bag so i hope that helped as far as watching some tape and understanding exactly what's going on in the game and where it's just it's always details 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 and i know there'll be a lot of plays up on social media there'll be some plays that you know baldy and all those guys analyze i want to show you some plays i think they're important in context to me because they scream out to me at least that there is some discipline issues and some focus issues. I think generally speaking, there's always going to be effort from professional athletes. I don't think that's ever a question, but your focus and effort and preparation translate to the game. And right now we always have to, when you're losing, you always have to look at yourself and go, Am we put in, are we putting the effort in preparation that it takes to be successful? And that's not just the players. That's how the coaching staff prepares the, the, the game plan. That's how they communicate the game plan. That's how they set the standards for practice because coaches and players, the leadership around the team, have to set the standard in preparation. I think that's so important. So mailbag. First question was, 
Well, bringing in two veteran wide receivers help. And I think the second part of this was, I think the offensive offensive line starting to click. I would say one, I'm not sure the offensive line is starting to click. Bakhtiari being hurt is a big deal. Zach Tom did play really well. I think he played better than Yash. Um, but I think that might be because of who they're playing against. Ross, Yash has never really been that great in the run game, but he's only going to get better and better. I think time's good for these guys. Pass protection was generally pretty good. Elgin Jenkins had a couple of missteps against a really good player uh, at the left guard position, but you can see how he can play. John Rennie Jr., I thought played pretty well. I was very pleasantly, not surprised because I expect him to play well, but anytime you have to go over to the other side of the ball, I thought he did a good job. So, um, I don't know what that's going to look like moving forward. You know, certainly when you put back Tiari back in the game, Zach Tom played good enough that you start scratching your head with that whole situation now over at right tackle. I think the big thing is the interior offensive line is now what it is, right? As long as everybody's healthy, Elgin Jenkins has to play left guard. JRJ's got to play right guard. And you've got to have, you know, Myers is going to be your center. And then hopefully Bakhtiari plays what they do with the right tackle position. I think you're just going to, I think you're going to see a lot more Mercedes Lewis moving forward as if they ever decide to actually run the ball more than 12 times a game, because he's just like another tackle. He can really help out that right tackle as far as chipping and all those different, you know, kind of things that he brings to the game, double teams, et cetera, all the trade blocks, all the backside sees they're better with Mercedes Lewis in than anybody else, but bringing two vet wide receivers. Well, I guess the first question is like, who are you going to bring in? You know, OBJ is not back from injury yet. There's just there's not a lot of guys out there that you go, is this plug and play? Because Sammy Watkins was, you know, I guess could have been one of those guys. And I know he's been injured, but I don't think it was plug and play from the beginning as far as what it takes to kind of get up with um, Aaron Rodgers' level of knowledge with the offense. What we have to, you know, the thing that's frustrating about the Green Bay Packers, honestly, from my perspective, and from a former player's perspective is that you see teams with lesser uh, with lesser offensive talent doing more on offense because they've simplified their offense they've just accepted for you know they are what they are the jets the giants uh, the, the command everybody we've played maybe say more McLaren's better than anybody we got okay but we got the guy throwing the ball right and and Aaron we there's got to be better ways to get Aaron Jones the ball there's got to be better ways to get AJ Dillon the ball in things that he that he's good at running there's got to be better ways to exploit the edges with a guy like Mercedes Lewis to play in tight end position. There's just got to be better ways to do that stuff. And we're not doing it. And it, again, it, sometimes it feels like, are we doing it to spite everybody? Um, is it the best way forward or is it the best way forward given what we're comfortable doing? I guess. Are we, are we at the point now at three and four where we're uncomfortable enough that we're just going to go ahead and say, you know what, let's live, let's be comfortable being uncomfortable. And go ahead and, and do exactly what our personnel skill and our skill sets fits and not try to fit anything else, you know, square peg into a round hole. I don't think bringing two veteran wide receivers in personally or one would help. Listen, if you could bring in OBJ and he was just, yeah, I'm, I'm coming in here, I'm doing, I'm doing work, then great. But Christian Watson will get healthy eventually. He'll be your deep threat. You got to, you got to unleash him and let him, and let him run. Like, you know, I just always bring back Corey Bradford, got to play with us. You know, he didn't have a lot of route. His route tree was pretty limited. It was like running nine about four or five times a game. You're going to get, you're going to get a PI or a long ball. It just happens because that's the kind of talent that he has, the kind of speed that he had and he could, and he could separate. So I, I think that Watson, you know, in the short term, we haven't seen it. You expect it after that first play in Minnesota, you haven't really seen him, you know, even they haven't even tried doing that again. A lot of these things are head scratchers, but you expect that to happen when he comes back. Second question, is uh, Aaron Rodgers the leader we need when things are going poorly? I, and, you know, this is yes. The short answer is yes. I mean, the guy is a four-time MVP. Everybody, you know, is he bristly when he's – is he upset right now? Yeah, of course he's upset right now. Is he is he probably pissed off Devontae Adams isn't there? Yeah, he probably is. Is he having some internal fighting with, with the plays that they're calling? Yeah, probably. Is he doing everything he can to help his receivers get ready? I'm sure he is. Because everything is a reflection. Like he's the he is the Green Bay Packers. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been doled out to different players and coaches and pr presidents every because of the success that is built on the shoulders of Aaron Rodgers. So everything that happens there is his responsibility. One where I mean ultimately and he knows that that is the burden of being great. He's the Hall of Famer on that team, period. He's in the special room of Hall of Famers on that on any team. And so anything that happens, 
is going to fall on his shoulders. So he's going to do everything he can to make sure that people know what they're supposed to be doing, how they're supposed to be doing it. And again, we talked about it. When he talks about simplifying the offense and you look out and you see Dobbs and him out in miscommunication on a, on what could have been a touchdown, you start going, well, maybe that's what he's talking about. Maybe we need to have less concepts and make sure these guys have intimate knowledge of exactly what it is we're doing, even if it's not that much. We talked about Zach Tom. My hat's off to him. Uh, starting your first game in this situation against, you know, one of the better defensive lines in the league uh, on a team that's not playing very well right now, filling in for a guy who is an all pro. I thought he played really well. I think, you know, I hope somebody hugged him when he got home because he deserves it. And uh, it's, you'll never forget the first time you get a start in the national football league, you run out of the tunnel and you're the starter for the first time in that first snap. Uh, gives me goosebumps right now. And, you know, I think his future is bright. I think he's going to only become more physical and more uh, more of a technical master as he, as he develops. But I think his future is really bright. I'm excited that he got a chance to play. I don't like the circumstances with Bakhtiari being hurt, but I'm excited that he got a chance to play. And the last question here, you know, what is the culture of the Packers? And that's not necessarily – that's a tough question. That's not a question I know that, that I know I can answer. Um, I, I'm certainly not in the building. Um, I have I have people, you know, in that building that are, that are close to that team. Um, I, I have – I take issue as a, as a former offensive lineman who has a lot of pride in the way that we played as a, as a unit – and I include Amon Green and, and Will and Bubba. I include those guys with that unit. And I it has a lot of pride in guys like TJ Lang and Josh Sitton and and Corey Lindsley and uh all the guy those guys. I have a lot of pride in saying that I'm part of that brotherhood and what they brought to the table. And and guys like TJ being a, just a tough son of a bitch, and, and Josh being an incredibly talented guy that could like go through an I watched him go through an entire game and grayed out damn near perfect you know when he was down in Miami and uh I think right now you look at the defense and you look at Rashawn Gary and and Preston Smith uh, I didn't highlight him like I should have today he played really well especially in the run game he's playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage I mean the guy is just physically dominant um uh, Kenny Clark, I know he hasn't had the production he had the first couple of games. I think that's a little bit of a return to the mean. But you also look and you watch, if you just focus on him, he's a physically dominant player. He's a dominating player. I don't know that we have other physically intimidating players on that defense. But I was thinking today, somebody asked me this question uh, on the radio, and I don't know if we have a physically dominating or intimid or I should say intimidating player on offense. I don't know if we have a guy that's a push over the pile guy. Um, I don't know if we have a guy that has that kind of demeanor. I think Mercedes Lewis probably is the closest to it because he because he's a 275 pound tight end that can dominate defensive ends. He's not pushing him over piles or anything, but he can he can physically dominate him. And I think that's probably from a defensive end perspective that's that's probably uh, a little bit disheartening. But I don't see. And we don't have you don't have to be like you know this isn't a tough guy thing, but this is a physical sport. This is a dominating sport, and and right now, Aaron Jones is your best player, and you're going to have to scratch and claw for every yard that you get. Like we get in these first and twenties, first and fifteens, you know, second and second and thirteens, and it's like you're not going to pick up the first down. And part of it is mindset wise, you got to think to yourself like. I'll be goddamn if we're not going to pick up this first down. Like we're going to, if I got to go dive over a pile or I got to do that, you know, whatever I got to do to get this, first, we're going to go do it. If I got to get down and, and get two blocks, if I got to, you know, if I got to fight through two tack, whatever it takes, I got to be able to do it. I got to set my jaw and do it. That's the kind of person I need to be for this team right now. And whether it's the way they discuss things in team, whether it's the friendliness they have between you know staff and players, whether it's the, the, the practice tempo, all, none of this I know, 
But I do know that there are teams, and we've just played, you know, particularly the Jets and the Giants. We just played two of them, the, the Jets in particular. Those guys come to hit you. And, I, you know, it's like Santana Dawson used to say, hit, stick, and talk, you know what. And, and those guys do it. And there's teams in the league that do it. And you don't have to be the tough guys in the room. But this is a violent sport. This is a this is a uh, a physically dominant sport. This is a sport of me versus you. Can you win your one v one matchup? And we got to get back to understanding that yeah, Aaron's the best player in the league. But you know, I run the show in my house, and I'm going to win my one v one matchup. And I got pride in my ability as a receiver to create separation. And I got pride as a receiver to create contested catches and run through blocks. And I, you know, I blitz pickup matters to me. I'm not going to get run over. Those are the things I think that I would love to see this team just take the next step and really see if we can change that part of the game, just the details. You know, if everybody improved, if everybody improved literally one play a game, like in other words, if they graded out at 80% last game and they graded out at, you know, 83% this game, we would win these games. It's really that simple. You know, it's a handful of plays here or there, but it's the attitude that you bring every play that allows you to improve in those situations. So that's a long winded way of me saying, I want to see some people on their backs. Cause I'm, I, I love, I'm an offensive lineman. I want to see, I want to see people get knocked around, man. That's, that's the name of the game for me. If you, if you have that line that can physically dominate, you look across the NFL right now, Offensive lines that physically dominate and run the football have success in this league, period. Maybe more so now than the last couple of years because of all the injuries we have at different positions. Good news, bad news. Uh, lines uh, inexplicably, you know, I would have bet the over for that game, the, the Lions-Cowboys game. I think the Lions scored six points, so they're back to being the Lions again. Unfortunate. Chicago plays tonight versus New England. I don't think anybody expects Chicago to win. Uh, I think the Vikings had the week off. The Vikings look really good right now uh, in this division, and if the Packers are going to have any chance to turn this thing around, you know, when you look at their schedule, let me pull it up real quick. I know we got the Bills next, but I think then – it gets kind of – give me one second here. Okay, so we got <laughs> – we got the Lions, which the – you know, they six points and they got blanked by New England. So maybe Ben Johnson, my buddy out there run, playing offensive coordinator, is uh, – maybe he's run out of options. But they were putting up points in bunches. Then you got the Cowboys. That's going to be a really tough game. That defensive line versus our offensive line, the way we're playing right now. We need Bakhtiari to get back. We need to figure out that right tackle position. We can't keep committing like two extra blockers and just running two man routes with these guys for the rest of the year. It's just not going to work. Tennessee Titans, it's going to be at home. That's a that's a tough. I mean, again, you're looking at Derrick Henry, you're looking at Justin Simmons inside playing def. Uh, you know, it's these are tough games. Eagles, I don't think anybody's Eagles. Uh, Seven twenty p.m. kickoff in Philly five weeks from now. There's a lot of tough games up coming, so it'll be gut check week this week for sure. There's gonna be a lot, a lot of talk coming out there. I, you know, as a fan, as a former player, as a guy who just is 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 committed to the Green Bay Packers organization, just really want to see. And we saw a little bit of it, I think, from the defense early in the game, especially. But I want to see that fervor, that excitement, that intensity, that love for one another and playing for one another. I want to see that come through in the way that you attack your opponent, right? And I want to see, uh, I want to see Aaron Jones get the damn football. All right, everybody, check us out. Amon uh, Green Thirty at Twitter and Instagram. Me, Mike Wall sixty eight. Check that out on Twitter. Process to perform. This is going to be on YouTube as well at our Process to Perform page. So if you guys want to check these clips. Please do that. I'll put some amount on Twitter. But otherwise, uh, we'll get back on Thursday for a preview of the Bills game, which I believe is a Sunday night game. Yeah, Sunday night next week. That'll be that's gonna be a tough one, guys. <laughs> it'll be it'll be a fun, it'll be a fun preview. All right.